All right, so I got this email. Um, this person's confused about some of my videos, and I'm going to answer his questions. It's nothing personal by him, so he's just asking some basic questions, so this shouldn't really be invading his privacy. He's just asking questions. So he's saying, do I have the same th opinions as I Yip Man when it comes to non-Chinese learning Kung Fu? I don't have the same opinions. I'm not... It's, I'm not saying that non-Chinese shouldn't learn Kung Fu. Like, I'm saying that Kung Fu should be representing the Chinese culture and its people, and that non-Chinese people can learn, and they should learn. Um, but my issue is people that are trying to claim the Kung Fu and trying to teach it, um, and even demonstrate it to want some respect, um, there's some issues there. So meaning, like, the Kung Fu belongs to the Chinese origin. So, if you're Japanese, you have your own martial arts expression coming out of Japan. You might have your own individual expression, but you're not really going to call it Kung Fu because you're from Japan. They got their own labels for, that, for the martial arts. So they call it karate, or they call it jiu-jitsu, they call it judo, or they call it aikido or whatever label that they choose to, to label it as, they got their Japanese version of it. The Chinese got their labels, all right? The Filipinos have their labels. Um, Korea has their labels. So Koreans will say either Taekwondo or Aikido or Tang Soo Do or whatever that they have in their country. Um, America has their labels like wrestling, boxing, and, you know, cage fighting like every country is going to have their labels and what i'm saying is that the chinese labels like those are for the chinese so in order for you to really get permission to use certain labels it has to come through like a chinese person you know in order for it to be but even if it is a chinese person if it's on if it's an unqualified Chinese person, then, then it's really, it's still fa false. You know, it's all about like protecting certain labels, certain trademarks, just certain things from being corrupted. So like Bruce Lee created his label. Now, anybody could say, oh, I practice Ji Kune Do. But why say Jeet Kune Do when you can say, I practice martial arts? Okay, you can say you practice Jeet Kune Do, but then from what? Okay, from because I watched his movies, I read his books, so I'm following his method. Okay, fine. You're saying you practice it. But when you are trying to teach it, there's a problem there. And then also, if you're trying to make money, that's an even bigger problem. Because who authorized you to teach something when the person that created that label didn't give you permission, he didn't authorize you, he never said you were qualified. Like, why do you have the right to take that label and all of a sudden start teaching it, start making money off of it, start making it seem like you created that label when you didn't? There is that's the problem that I'm talking about. So this person that was break breaking these bricks, for example, he's not only using the label Kung Fu, but he's claiming himself to be a master. He's operating his own school, making money, all from the Chinese label. But then who gave him permission to use that label? If he just said martial art, that he's a martial art master, okay, fine. You know, but Mexico doesn't really have their martial art in their culture. You know, they like soccer and stuff like that, you know. So they, they got salsa dancing, stuff like that. It's not in their cult. The martial arts is not in their culture. There's a lot of Mex you know, Mexican boxers, Hispanic boxers that are very talented. But he's not saying boxing. He's not saying soccer. He's not saying salsa dancing. He's saying Kung Fu. So Kung Fu is from China. So there has to be some Chinese person that has mastered the art in order to say, hey, I certify you or I authorize you to start using this label under my guidance. You know, but if there's nobody, then 
even if it is the Chinese person, it doesn't mean that he's a master of Kung Fu. You can't just go to Chinatown, find a Chinese person and be like, oh, you know, am I a Kung Fu master? Like, no, like, you got to find somebody that, that specializes in Kung Fu, in that expression, and you have to be trained by that person and authorize that person to pretty much represent that label, the Kung Fu label. If he says, no, you're not there yet, or you're not representing it the way that it's supposed to be, then you should not be using that label because he didn't even give you the go-ahead under his guidance. You can't just go in there and just be like, all right, I'm going to claim this now. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's an art. So, like, yes, Kung Fu is the discipline to better yourself. And yeah, like, technically, anybody can practice it. But... To represent that label, to teach that under that label, to market and promote under that label, to make money under that label, that is an entirely different thing. You know, like, I could go and learn salsa from YouTube or whatever, salsa dancing, but anybody, nobody can stop me from learning salsa dancing, even though it's not a part of my culture. I can still learn it. But all of a sudden, if I just say that I'm a salsa dancing instructor and I'm going to start making money, even if I didn't make money, I start, start teaching it, then there's going to be some, some issues there because it's associated with a certain culture. And if you'll be, you'll be using the, the terminology of that country, there's a problem there. I mean, like I said, if he's saying, mar if he says he wants to practice martial arts, he wants to teach martial arts, okay, but then say martial arts. Don't say Kung Fu. Don't say Ji Kune Do. Don't say Tai Chi. Don't say Wing Chun. Don't say whatever label that's coming from China of which there's nobody in an authority to give you any authorization to even use that label for profit purposes. I mean, not just profit purposes, but just the integrity of a certain label to not distort it because even if people aren't making money but they go around t falsely misrepresenting a certain label and teaching things that is not what that label is supposed to represent then that's de de destroying the reputation of that label so all of a sudden if people started teaching Zumba and then they start calling it Kung Fu Start, they start destroying the reputation of what that Kung Fu label is supposed to represent by teaching Zumba because Zumba is not the Kung Fu expression. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't call it Kung Fu. Call it Zumba because you got Bruce Lee that's saying that he practices Kung Fu. He's taking that label to a high level expression. You know? Like, and he's not only that, but he's Chinese as well. But then you got like a Hispanic person, a white person, a black person, or somebody that's non-Chinese saying that they practice Kung Fu, but then they're making a mockery out of it. That's destroying the reputation and the respect that Bruce Lee worked so hard to build up. And now he's destroying that reputation. And it's not necessarily just non-Chinese people doing that. There's people like Jackie Chan that are doing the same thing, saying, oh, I'm representing Kung Fu. I'm Chinese too. And then he's making a mockery out of it by making movies like drunken master or whatever the case may be I mean it's not just about a racial thing because Chinese people could destroy the, the labels of their own country as well but it's even worse when a foreigner comes and takes a label from a certain country of which they don't even they're not even associated with and then they start distorting it and corrupting it and just you know Making a mockery out of it, making a joke out of it, just like this guy did with this brick breaking demo. You know, so anybody can practice anything, but very few people should be authorized to teach to the public. You know, especially when it's for money, but even if it's not even involving money. Like I said, people that are just unqualified teachers teaching something. Non-Chinese or Chinese, it destroys the reputation of the label. But it's even worse when a foreigner is doing it because the foreigner should be using his own labels. Like I said, somebody that's coming from Thailand, they got their own 
labels for their martial arts expression. Muay Boran, Muay Thai boxing, whatever. Why would they come over and start saying Kung Fu when they got their own labels to use and represent? Because if they're representing it in a horrible way, then at least they're destroying the reputation of their own country. If they're representing it in a great way, then, then they, they're promoting their country from where they're from. And why, why not? You know, it's like, why would you even turn against your own country to represent another country? Like, what do you have against your country? Like, even the founder of Aikido didn't like the expression of jiu-jitsu or karate at the time, so he created his own Japanese label called Aikido to represent within his own country. Bruce Lee didn't like the Wing Chun expression or the generalized Shaolin Kung Fu expression, so he created his own label, Ji Kune Do, to represent. And that's a Chinese label representing China. Why would Bruce Lee all of a sudden claim karate? But when you got somebody like Chuck Norris, who's representing karate, okay, he's a white guy, but it's pretty clear that he did get authorization from some Japanese master to represent that label because he's pretty good. So that's really no discrepancy there because here you got a person that's actually good at what he does, pretty good, and you could, you could probably trace back to who authorized him to use that label to, to promote and start teaching under the label of karate. And you got somebody like Jean-Claude Van Damme. I don't know exactly what he practiced, but he's a white guy. And say he practiced, say it was Taekwondo. Or another example, say Wesley Snipes. You know, he does Taekwondo. And... He's pretty good. So he's representing the label at a pretty good level. So who gave him permission to use that label? Okay, it has to go back to somebody. And it's probably going to have to be a Japanese person. Like, it's going to be some Chinese person that gave you permission to use that label. You know? But if a Chinese person is ir irresponsible with the way that he's distributing label, you know, Author authorizations to use what and what label, then what happens is first you got, a un you got a corrupted Chinese person who's just basically selling titles and ranks to foreigners for profit whom are not even qualified to teach and then the foreigner starts selling the ranks and titles for profit as well until it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. You got the foundation, the Chinese person who is corrupt, who is a fake master, authorizes a foreigner to be a fake master, and then the foreigner starts authorizing other foreigners to be fake masters, and it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. To the point where it's like this whole Wing Chun thing, where everybody that's claiming Wing Chun from students to instructors to everybody, they're all foreigners. There's, not, there's no Chinese person around. Like every single foreigner is using the Wing Chun Kung Fu label. There's no Chinese person around. You can't find them. Who gave authorization to all these foreigners to use this Chinese label? And then you go to Chinatown, you find hundreds and thousands of Chinese people and none of them are even claiming Wing Chun Kung Fu. Well, none of them are claiming Kung Fu. None of them are claiming Wing Chun. And this is the whole Chinatown. There's not even one martial arts shop in the Chicago Chinatown. Not even one martial arts school in the Chicago Chinatown. But there's like hundreds of restaurants, gift shops, everywhere. Not even one martial arts school in Chinatown. Everywhere you go in Chinatown, Chicago, all these Chinese people everywhere, nobody practices martial arts. But yet, you go over on YouTube, and then everybody that's trying to teach Ji Kune Do, Wing Chun, Kung Fu, Shaolin Kung Fu, everybody's a foreigner. There's no Chinese people. Everybody is a foreigner teaching something of which it's not even their culture, not even representing their people. 
It's like I don't have a problem with people learning it, practicing it, but I have a problem of people teaching something of which they are not even qualified to teach because it's not even their, theirs. Now, if everybody's not, if they're not saying Wing Chun, if they're not saying Kung Fu, if they're not saying Shaolin Kung Fu, if they're not saying whatever ch Tai Chi, but they said, you know what, this is my expression of the martial arts, then I respect that because martial arts is a generalized label. It's not, you're not specifying it to a certain country. It's just, this is your expression of the martial arts. You're black and Hispanic. Or whatever. Because when you're black, when you're Hispanic, when you're white, your country, they don't... Martial arts is not a part of their culture. Martial arts is a part of the cultures of the East, certain countries that they... It's like, that's their way of life in that country. So, even this person sent me this video talking about how in Japan, all the schools, all the children are forced to practice judo in school. In America, that's not how it is. In America, you're playing basketball, you're playing football, you're playing soccer. You're not doing martial arts in America. But that's how it is in Japan. So, like, they have their labels for the martial arts. Japan, Korea's a big one, China's a big one. Even, you know, um, Thailand is known from some of their martial arts expression. But America, does not have martial arts. But now they took this label MMA and they say, okay, this is ours. Okay, so that's an American thing now. And that's what they, the thing that I keep arguing about is they cannot corrupt this, have this corrupted fighting and then call it martial arts. That's the whole thing that I'm speaking against. Because that is not even martial arts. Don't even call it martial arts. And that's disrespectful for all martial artists that are representing martial arts from across all the countries of the East. So America, I'm not going to refute it. They are really good at boxing. They're really good at wrestling. They're really good at football. They're really good at basketball. But I'm telling you, they know nothing about martial arts. Because martial arts is art. Americans don't know about art. They know about sports. Baseball, tennis, they, they love all that. They're great at all that. But don't come with arrogance and say that, oh, we know everything. We, we're martial artists too. We're fighters, we're martial artists, we're basketball players, we're football players. We own everything. We, we're, we're the top dog in everything. I mean, that's how arrogant America is. But the truth of the matter is, they do not know anything about martial arts. And if you look at the movies, you'll see Martial art movies mainly get produced from China. Fearless, Hero, all the Bruce Lee movies, aside from End of the Dragon, which was from because of Bruce Lee. Like, the Chinese martial art movies coming from China. America doesn't make martial art movies. America makes action movies. America makes movies like Spider-Man, Batman, Iron Man. Ant-Man, X-Men. America is all about action. Okay? Bodybuilders. Like, America, always the best bodybuilders. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Ronnie Coleman, best basketball players, best football players. Okay, you know, they own all that. But they don't own the martial arts. They don't. Even though they try to take it and, and make it seem like they do own it, they still don't own it. So, that's the problem that I'm talking about. Anybody, I appreciate Americans practicing the martial arts. I appreciate that. Because how is a Chinese person, a Korean person, a Japanese person that immigrates from their country come to America and even make money teaching their art? They need Americans to practice their art. Otherwise, they're not going to make any money. So, Americans practicing martial arts, I have no issues with that. But teaching it... That is a whole different story. Because do not teach something that you do not know. And also, do not teach without permission from the person who has taught you this art. Because even though you might think you have it, 
you probably don't have it. And you probably are misrepresenting it. And if you are teaching something that is a poor, mis poor representation of the real, then you are imperifying that art. So that's where I'm getting at. Anybody could buy an iPod or an iPhone, Apple products, but you cannot all of a sudden start creating Apple phones, creating Apple chargers and start selling it under the Apple name without their permission. And that's what was in the article earlier today that I read where people are using the Apple product, Apple name, selling chargers that are fraudulent in Amazon and then Apple is suing that company for doing that. So Apple will want the whole world to buy their phones but Apple does not want people that are fraudulently taking their products without their permission, selling it at a lower cost or even for free or whatever the case may be, that damages the reputation of their product. So when you got a real Kung Fu master that's representing the art, he needs to give permission for his disciple, his student to teach that art of Kung Fu. If he doesn't give permission, then there's no teaching going on. But if all of a sudden somebody says, you know what, I saw this Bruce Lee movie, I'm going to start teaching Kung Fu now. Okay, so then now you got a Bruce Lee representing Kung Fu and you got this no talent, unqualified person teaching Kung Fu, the same label that Bruce Lee used. And then he doesn't have any skill, he doesn't have any talent, he's not even qualified to teach, but yet he's teaching it. And why did he have to say Kung Fu? He could have said, oh, I'm going to teach my own version of martial arts. And this version of the martial arts incorporates magic shows. This, this, this martial art incorporates deception of making people think that you're stronger than you actually are. This martial arts incorporates stunt doubles to make it seem like you can do certain moves when you can't. This martial art incorporates the use of steroids, the use of cocaine, the use of marijuana, the use of alcohol. This martial art incorporates sexual abuse. I mean, it could go on and on. It's like, if you're gonna damage anybody's reputation, go ahead and damage your own. But do not damage the reputation of an entire country by using their label of which nobody of whom has any sort of authority gave you the permission to use that label. Like I said, just because it's a Chinese person doesn't mean all of a sudden you're qualified to use that label because he said that you can't. Because if that Chinese person is untalented, unskilled, and unqualified himself, and then he authorizes you to use his label, then you're representing the fake still even though it's coming from a Chinese person. You know, so that's kind of like you going up to some person on the street, oh, that's a white guy, so now can I start selling, if, with, if, with your permission, can I start selling Apple phones now? Even though you don't even work for Apple? Like, that's what I'm getting at. You know, so, it's, it's a matter of containing corruption and there's lawsuits going on all over of people especially with all the social media going on with people stealing certain things that, that is not does not belong to them and then they start selling it for profit and that is just rampant in the martial arts and then what happens is all martial arts all martial artists lose respect the more deception that there is out there, the more fraudulent activities that there are out there. 
And essentially, everybody's trying to make money. And even the Chinese will sell out their own people to make money. They don't care. They just want to make money. So that's why they're talking about this whole Birth of the Dragon movie coming out. But then the owner of the, you know, of the movie that, that allowed, the, the, they gave the green light for the movie is a Chinese company. But then they're saying they, they, get, they went ahead and gave it a green light because they don't even care about the legacy of Bruce Lee. They just want to make money. So they don't care if it's feeding into the stereotypes of yellow face or whatever the case may be. So even Chinese people are selling out their own people. Not just a foreigner, but Chinese people are also enemies in this whole corruption as well. You know, it's like the old Chinese people are against each other when it comes to something like the Tenement Square. You know, you got the government and you got the people and then there's conflict and then people die because of that conflict. There's conflict in China between Chinese and Chinese too. So there's an immense amount of corruption in China just like there's an immense amount of corruption in America. And it's all about seeing through this corruption and trying not to participate within this corruption yourself. I know there's a lot of Bruce Lee fans out there that love Bruce Lee, but it doesn't mean that you should start teaching Jeet Kune Do just because you love Bruce Lee. Or that you're a Jeet Kune Do master just because you love Bruce Lee. You're not a Jeet Kune Do master just because you saw all of Bruce Lee's movies. Okay, you read his books, okay, fine. You practice martial arts, okay, fine. But you're still not a Jeet Kune Do master, and you're still not teaching Jeet Kune Do. Only Bruce Lee can teach Jeet Kune Do, and Bruce Lee happens to be dead. So rather than teaching it, just tell people to buy Bruce Lee's books and learn it themselves. And then what do you practice? Well, you practice your expression of the martial arts that has been highly inspired by Bruce Lee, but that's not what you're teaching because you're not Bruce Lee. You are who you are. And don't damage Bruce Lee's reputation by misrepresenting Ji Kune Do. Because there's people jumping in the cage, fighting under the name of Ji Kune Do and getting their asses whooped. So, who the hell gave them permission to use that label to jump in that cage to get their ass whooped? And that's the type of stuff that I'm talking about. And the more people that jump in that cage and say, oh, I practice Kung Fu, and they start getting their asses whooped, that damages the reputation of Kung Fu. Do not jump in a cage. Do not do crime under the label of Kung Fu when you don't know anything about Kung Fu. Jump in that cage. Commit crime under your own name. Whatever your name is, John Huckleberry, martial arts, you practice your own martial arts, go ahead and jump in the cage, get your ass whooped, go ahead and rob that bank under your own name. Do not start doing all this crime under an entire culture's reputation. That's what I'm talking about is the issue. When, and there's even Chinese people destroying the reputation of their own labels for money. Okay? So, the Kung Fu Panda, a bunch of Chinese people take part in the Kung Fu Panda and the Jackie Chan movies, propagate into the entire world, let's laugh at Kung Fu, okay? Then there's that black person that made that, movie, that song, Kung Fu Fighting, everybody's Kung Fu Fighting, everybody's laughing about that. So you got a black person making a complete mockery out of Kung Fu by making this Kung Fu fighting. Everybody's Kung Fu fighting. He's wearing this dancing and all this stuff. And then you got Bruce Lee, who's Chinese, who's working his ass off to represent Kung Fu, to give respect. But then you got this black person coming along, making a whole mockery out of this Kung Fu fighting. That is the problem that I'm talking about. Why did you have to say Kung Fu fight? Everybody's Kung Fu fight. Why don't you say everybody's MMA fighting? Everybody's boxing. Everybody's boxing fighting and make fun of that. Everybody's wrestling fighting and make fun of that. 
But no, you gotta say Kung Fu Fight. So then everybody, when they hear about Kung Fu, they think about the song, they start making fun of it, they start laughing, they start giggling. That is the sh shit that I get pissed off at. You understand? That is the problem. And like I said, ch there's already enough Chinese people damaging their own reputation by the stupid stuff that they do. And then now you got foreigners that jumping in the bandwagon. Oh, let's all make fun of the Chinese people. The Chinese people like Jackie Chan are giving us the green light. So, okay, now the white person can make fun of Chinese people. Now the black person makes fun of Chinese people. Now the Hispanic person. The whole damn world is making fun of Chinese people. Because they want to laugh at somebody. You understand? And who's working hard to get respect? Bruce Lee. And that's it. You know, that's part of my objective is to gain respect for the Chinese people. Like, stop laughing at us. Stop stealing our labels and start making a mockery out of our labels. Stop exploiting our arts, our culture, and everything that we do. And I got passion because that's my roots. I'm coming from China. And how many Chinese people do you even see that are even representing martial arts out there? Not just in your community, but also on the internet. How many Chinese people do you actually see representing the martial arts. Very few. You got a bunch of fighters everywhere. And everybody that's non-Chinese trying to teach the Chinese martial arts. Exploitation, rampant. Corruption, rampant. And all it takes is a little intelligence to see what's going on and not to participate within that corruption. And that's it. That's all I got to say about that question. There's more questions, but I'll answer those at a later time.